Hey there, Bridge family. It's Pastor Jeff, and I've come to you to speak for just a few minutes about a very serious topic. I've been reminded yet again today in a very sad way of the realities and the trappings, the tragedies of spiritual warfare. You see, an article has come out this morning telling the story of yet another fallen pastor. Here in Vermont, sadly, in a leading church that's doing an awful lot of work with church planting and Great Commission kingdom growing ministries. Well, unfortunately, their youth pastor has now been exposed for having sexual relations with a 16 or 17 year old girl in the youth group. And as that news broke, I had literally just finished reading some articles about another mega church pastor out of Chicago, a person that was thought to be a strong evangelical Bible believing Bible teaching and I just was blown away you know having been reminded two weeks ago of another pastor uh, in Louisville Kentucky where the police actually entered the church premises to arrest this man who was on staff at the church who had been using his computer in the church to stream child porn I, I mean it's just mind-blowing stuff. This was uh, not only a church staff member, but somebody who was in the midst of a PhD program theologically. And so I just want you to know I'm, I'm ever mindful of the fact that we live in a fallen world. And I want you to know two things. Number one, these are reminders that it's so important that we walk a life of purity, that when God says, listen, be holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy, that's not just a slogan. You know, that, that's not simply something that the superstars of spirituality get to attain. No, that's a call for every one of us. And I want you to remember it was God who made it clear through his word that you can do all things in Christ who gives you strength. That means you can live the life of a pure, holy walk with God, that you can go on this journey with Jesus and not necessarily ever be perfect, but you can certainly be passionate. You know, remember, the call is to perfection. The measure is the direction of our life. What's the trajectory of our lives? And when we do make mistakes and stumble, to be quick, to be transparent, to repent, and to give God the glory in all that we do, and to guard God's glory in all that we do, and to grow God's glory in all that we do. And so this, like so many other parts of our walk with Jesus, brings that tension the ever mindful need to preach to ourselves that which we preach to others, to take to heart that which we bring into our homes, to tell ourselves what we are telling others, and that is to be holy, for the Lord our God is holy, to live a life worthy of the gospel, to stay on the narrow path no matter what, all by God's grace and all for his glory. Now, to that uh, point, let me just also tell you this and close on an up note. I was also reminded of this spiritual warfare in a positive way yet again this morning. Just before meeting with another person here a few minutes ago, dealing with the, the pain and the brokenness of adultery and sexual misconduct within a marital relationship, I had come in after receiving an article in my uh, email box of a gentleman who's recently written a book called Walk On. And he tells the story of being an undersized college student who gets to walk on and actually gets put on the team of one of the nation's most prestigious football programs at the college level. Uh, a team that goes on to win some of the most prestigious national honors for college football. And he gets on this team and immediately acknowledges that this was God at work and he gives God all the glory and he recognizes as likely at, that it is that he's on this team that God has a reason and a purpose. And he tells the story, I, I, I don't know the book, but I do know the story from the article that uh, he immediately begins to see himself as a missionary on this football team. And he quickly realizes that college football at this level is a true mission field and that the devil was at work in the context and in the environment 
of that football team, which I think is probably the case as a norm. You're not going to find a lot of bright lights for Jesus burning and uh, and really taking over the environment of a typical football locker room. Well, the story goes per the author that uh, he was feeling the letdown in the spiritual warfare as his Bible studies were not being attended. His uh, requests for prayer gatherings were being emptied and nobody was showing up. And he said he felt that the Lord had laid it on his heart one Christmas Eve to lay out 100 Bibles for each one of his teammates in the locker room, unbeknownst to them, so that when they would come into the locker room, either right at Christmas or right after, they would find this Bible that he had given for each one. Well, the story goes, and the tragedy was that uh, when this man came in, this young man came in himself after Christmas, he was not met with a bunch of thank yous for the Bibles that he had shared and given, but instead he walked into a locker room that had all these Bibles shredded, literally ripped up and shredded all over the locker room floor. It appeared to him that every single one of the Bibles had been ripped up and thrown on the floor. And he said he was just heartbroken by it and somewhat dejected, if you will, feeling as though in that battle the spiritual warfare actually went to the enemy's side. But here's the promise and here's the power and here's the purity of God in his word. The author went on to say that after he had graduated, some four years later, in his job, he was working with another person who actually had contact with one of the people in that locker room. And four years later, after feeling as though the battle had been lost, he was told that one of the men actually picked up and held the Bible. In fact, that man shared his Bible with another one a man who would not long after, tragically three or four days later, would lose his life, would die. But the man who put out the Bibles that appeared to be all shredded and thrown on the floor was told four years later that the man who received the Bible and had it shared through that and encountering God through his word made a profession of faith. And as the story is told, he came to Christ which would mean to say that he went to eternal life with Christ in heaven three days later when he suddenly and tragically perished. Friend, I just want to encourage you, be on guard, live out the warning, heed the warning, hear the warning, and carry the warning of the gospel to all people. Assume nothing. Again, these pastors that I've read about recently, it's tragic, but it's true. Anyone and everyone is susceptible to a stumble or to a fall, a magnitude of which you and I may never know the full effect of the ripples of the damage that got done. And at the same time, know this, when it looks like the word of God, the will of God, and the ways of God are shredded and are all over the floor and that all has been lost, know this, you may never know it, but God is at work even in those times. And there may be somebody outside your field of vision who actually heard or picked up and actually heeded the word of God. And you might just get tapped on the shoulder one day in heaven from somebody that you never had a chance to meet who would say, thank you for being faithfully obedient. Thank you for holding the course. Thank you for not backing down. God came to get me through you in your heart. Oh, may our God be glorified. May we remain ambassadors of his gospel no matter what. And we, may we never lose sight of the fact that whatever gets done for his glory is always done through his grace. And we are the privileged people to get to carry this truth and love to a dark and dying world. I pray that blesses you, inspires you, and encourages you to be all that Christ has called and created you to be. Amen and amen.